The Torah is both a shield and a protector. The Torah brings protection. 3,000 terrorists with automatic weapons against 3,000 people. How did one come out alive from this chaos? You have to say, you know, I've been looking forward to this for quite a while. Uh, if I can't speak the truth, I have no interest at all. It's been a long time since I saw the rabbi. The last time I saw the rabbi, he warned me about myself. Are you scared? Well, then I'll tell you more in a moment. If a heart patient comes to a doctor now, and you said that healing requires an open heart surgery, and it's going to be hard, and it's not going to wait, and you're moving on to a slide of a very tough six months, but I promise you, I promise you success in the surgery. I've done many like this. You're not in danger afterward. On one hand, you say, great, there will be a good end to this whole process. On the other hand, you're still worried. Even though I know what the end will be after all these twists, what will be the end is written in books. To live in such a time where your own brethren, a mixed multitude, rise against you wholly in collaboration with the enemies of Israel is unimaginable. It's not a pleasant feeling and the country is indeed in danger. Which Arab are you referring to? It wasn't clear that something was about to happen after a terrible year until New Year's. So it was already clear to me before New Year's that it's going to be a very hard year because of what happened last year. This is how it is. Everything in this world is measure for measure. And there are no prohibitions without a reason. Now that you see all the prohibitions and all the bereavement and all the injuries and the abductions and terrible things that happen that no one has yet been able to alleviate even a bit from it then you understand how awful the previous year was. And we, much above, are already approaching 200 days of fighting. How are we in Europe eager to strengthen the Security Council? First of all, you should know that one of the biggest mistakes in this country is the media. Those channels, um, even the right-wing ones, not just the left, nah. all the time weakening the people, weakening the army, and strengthening the enemy. Because the enemy sits and sees what is being said here in the studios or how desperate we are and how we are ready at any cost to release the hostages. Their price only went up. You see, in the first deal it was 3 to 1, but they're talking about 50 to 1. I've already heard about 100 to 1. The reason they are going to release hundreds of thousands of murderers again now. And they repeat the same mistake of employing a ruler. And again, thousands will die because of it. And only because of these terrible channels, there's no censorship on them, no supervision. I don't know where Sarah's salary is going. I don't know what kind of clown government is sitting here. Not understanding that these people are causing us more harm than the enemy itself. Even if they might not mean it, I'm sure the right wing doesn't intend to weaken this. But with all the chatter, the enemy has become collectors, making it even harder to bear. And the price keeps rising and growing. And that's it, that's what's happening now. Also, by the way, it's also delaying the release. Because it hurts to release thousands of murderers for hostages. Since we already have a precedent, you know what's happening? So that's the problem. And how can we all help or assist the defense system? We, we the people of Israel, those who do not fight on the front line, they have only one thing to do, that's repentance, charity, and good deeds, nothing else. Uh, the answer is, each one means more Torah study, more prayers, more reading psalms, fixing standings, less gossip, less baseless hatred, to reduce, to completely eliminate the hatred, the politics, the unnecessary arguments, all the disunity. Do more acts of kindness, truly cry out to the creator of the world with tears every day. Today it's about compassion and these things increasing among the people of Israel it weakens the forces of the citrin, the accusing Satan. So he can't, uh, in the heavenly court, to bring more disasters upon us. Because what happens? There is a supreme court above. There's the holy one. He is the judge. There's the Satan. He is the prosecutor. He's the prosecutor. And there's the defense attorney, Michael, minister of Israel. And there are arguments, everyday arguments. Michael, minister of Israel, brings the entire law of the legal community. Prayers. Psalms, repentance gatherings, acts of kindness by people, all sorts of things happening. 
and we bring the whole idea, all the baseless hatred, all the slander, all the things people write against each other on the internet, all the filth, all the theft, all the desecration of Sabbath, all the abomination in the land, in balanced weights. Right like now we see that until this moment he was on the negative side, but we are bracing ourselves to shift the weight towards the positive. Right now we are in the mountains of Jerusalem, but not very far from here in Tel Aviv at this very moment. There are quite a few protesters against the government, against the state itself. Can we understand them? Okay, so it's no secret. There's a group in the world, they're called the mixed multitude. The left, people of the left are divided into two groups. There are naive leftists. We might still believe, still believe, despite everything they have seen. Thinking we could reach agreements with the Nazis, with these predatory animals, is delusional. Living in fantasies is a shame we had to see what happened for them to understand that there's no one to talk to. The Arabs have one role, to answer Israel. They are not called Ishmael without reason. The graduation says, due to the frequent prayers of the people of Israel, it pours out to the creator of the world. And he will listen to us, God will listen to us, therefore they are called Ishmael. The Arabs are doing their part, they are the police, they are the ones beating us. Nothing can be done about it, they'll always come, all according to what Bracha decides. And the mixed multitude are the Egyptians, whom Moses converted and took out. In Egypt it is written that in every generation they reincarnate and cause us trouble. And in the end of days, that is now. The land will be ruled by the descendants of the mixed multitude. You see, they control the Supreme Court, the courts, the army. I heard from someone that you can't be a champion without a certification from the United States. And I don't need to tell you what kind of government there is in the United States as of March. Therefore, from the land, not every general was approved. Only the radical leftists, those who aligned with them, were. They controlled the media, they controlled the internet, they controlled the government. I think the government is also powerless. A right-wing government, a right-wing government that can't pass a single law, just sitting and yelling. The ones in control are an extreme left-wing mafia. The mixed multitude are enemies of the people of Israel. They caused the greatest harm to Jews ever, more than any empire that was here. They sacrificed the state. For 40 years they've been sacrificing the state, sacrificed Judaism, caused here baseless hatred, caused here divisions. They caused the cravings here, they caused the things that now bring disasters upon us every minute. They are responsible, just what? We cannot be rid of them because it is written that they will rule the land with a multitude of followers, so do not intervene. While they stand in Tel Aviv, while the blood of soldiers is shed, while they are in low morale, while we are going through a terrible experience, they continue as usual, they do their duty. These are the evil evenings, and they are selling us out from the inside like a cancer spreading within the body. There's nothing to be done, the cancer will continue to spread. Even now, you'd very much like to stop this, but we don't have much to do. The rabbi, how people, the rabbi spoke about champions. We will return to what is written in the scriptures. But the rabbi spoke about generals. And below the generals, he has a few officers and soldiers, which unfortunately, almost every day we mourn another casualty. And still, that for publication. And how do we deal with all this bereavement, Rabbi? It is very difficult for a person to accept losing someone dear to them. It is said that one who disciplines their children saves them from the punishment of hell. One cannot account for crimes of 50, 60 years. A person commits thousands of crimes in a week. It accumulates to millions of severe crimes. He was supposed to go to hell for hundreds of years. Eventually, God forbid, some disaster happens to him. He buries a child or two. And then this act saves him from the punishment of hell. So you see, losing a child, either a brother or a son, all these things, then this thing has immense weight. To such an extent that it converts the punishments of hell for 40 to 50 years. So I don't need to tell you how much this hurts and therefore it saves people from many sufferings later on in the afterlife because it is a terrible punishment. So now, as you see, it has already caused thousands of families great sorrow. Close to some 1,600 families are already suffering day and night. The entire nation suffers, anyone with a heart. He grieves every soldier that is killed. Not long ago, 24 soldiers were killed in a single day. It was hard to speak, hard to function, hard to work, hard to study. Rabbi, does it really affect you to that extent? No, it's what victims they are. But I repeat, unfortunately, people don't understand 
There are no prohibitions and no sins. We as a nation and each one as an individual, wow, huh? or it's on us. The more we deny it, the worse it will get. We need it's written to admit and then to be forgiven. Firstly, to admit. But Judaism, it comes from the word to give thanks. Grateful from the word thanks. Grateful for the truth and grateful from the word thanks. What is all this Judaism? One word, grateful. I am grateful for the truth. I am not uncomfortable, not deceitful, not a liar. Everything is true. Grateful, grateful and accepting. Admitting from the language of thanks. This is the moment when a person refuses to admit. No, it's not our fault. What are you talking about? Where was God for October? We don't deserve it. It's not a gap. Why they're getting stronger? Why the Nazis here from Gaza are getting stronger? And we're weakening. Why? Read a bit of the Bible, a bit of the Talmud, a bit of ethical writings. And see everything the minor Torah told us not to do? We did. Now the Torah also said, what is the price of these things? And the great assembly, the son of a white man, lives with all this terrible pain. There's still a lot of compassion here. Try to imagine 3,000 giraffes with automatic firing machines, grenades. RPGs, grenades, anti-tank missiles entering the country with dozens of jeeps and cars. Shopping. Thieves stealing tanks. They have access to thousands of people in the streets. Suddenly there are 3,000 people standing against them. Thousands of terrorists with automatic weapons against 3,000 people. How did anyone get out of this party alive? Naturally, no one was supposed to survive. We surround and cut down everyone. Where can they flee? They're encircled. You see that here too, there was a great miracle. 200 and something out of 3,000 died. People do not understand. They are very pained by those 200, by those 300. The heart is broken, but what would have been if there were 3,000 woven there? You understand? So even amid the loss and the trouble, even here, there's a huge amount of mercy in the heavens. The Rabbi speaks about the deceased. Uh, but since the 7th of October, from the joy of Torah until today, there are also quite a few injured. Commands are very hard, not just any commands Lim, for the written ones. And written notes, a twisted face, a burnt body. Rabbi, how can we comfort a young man who has just begun his life and already his leg is amputated? It's to comfort other than to strengthen in faith. Explaining to the wounded that what is written will straighten the bands digging on the sins. The prohibitions in this world save from prohibitions a thousand times harder in the eternal world. Ultimately, there is a verse, you were angry with me, O Lord, for I was fruitful. In the end, all of us, all the injured and all the families that fell, and each one of us suffering in various afflictions and troubles, issues of livelihood and problems with children, no matches, no children, and various troubles that many people here have in the world, in the country. In the end, everyone will stand before the Creator and say, I'm trying to build this. Thank you for all you have done for me. Thank you, God, for you have been gracious to me. So she raises the corner of her smile. And our tongue will be seen joy. In the end, we will be seen with all the suffering and the misery and the broken heart. It is written, a broken heart, God will heal. This broken heart that a person speaks with the Creator of the universe, the blessed board, accepts his prayer and it will pay off greatly for him. These lives are like fleeting moments in these days. A person among 30 feelings is called the wound. Lost a leg, wants to walk with the prosthesis, things like that. By the way, you get used to everything. At first it's very hard, but with every passing week, the suffering decreases, decreases, decreases. Until you reach a point where you get used to living in a new reality. That's the reality. That's how the Creator made everything. Ultimately, you get used to it, but what's important is not to complain, heaven forbid. It's not about denying guilt, not saying that I don't deserve it, you've covered for me, etc. And God forbid to weaken in faith. On the contrary, we do not break, we are an unbreakable nation. We as the right wing and the accused are Moses' servants. We are a people of believers. Believers in a lineage of believers. When talking about Moses, who is our generation's Moses? There is no Moses in our generation. There are great ones, there are righteous ones, there are wise students, but a leader like Moses we haven't had for 2,000 years, Shema. Yes. At least 2,000 years. This is related to the sermon. Pollution is linked to the generation, to the nature of the world, to the fact that today we live here in the land. We have a government of half of them hating God, hating Torah and traitors. So it's a bit hard to bring Moses in when half the people want to burn the Torah. You understand? It's not that simple. Is there a connection between what we're experiencing now and the forecast for the coming days? You see, it's, uh, it's see, not exactly then... clear whether the Gog and Magog era has already started. So, we are at the beginning of Gog and Magog. 
Gog and Magog isn't a matter of a day or two, it's something that will last years. Many wars described in the Torah, for instance, the conquest of the land of Israel. In the Torah, it sounds as though it took a week, but it took seven years of war and another seven years to divide the land. And that too amidst overt miracles that God did for us and expelled the exile from here. Seven skilled nations with a heavy army, we defeated them, drove them away from here, and we settled here. And it took 14 years until everyone sat under his tree and under his vine. So you see that the processes, though it seems in the Bible as if it's a matter of one or two days, it actually takes many years. It could be that now everything that is brewing, China, Russia, North Korea, and a few more evil countries along with Iran, they take a step in a very clear manner until not long ago Russia was like that, one foot here, one foot there. Now due to the war, and as the world turns to the sidelines, it's already with China, you have Russia, China and Iran forming a single bloc. North Korea together with them and a few more evil countries. They went against the grain of the world. You can see that it's already taken shape. You're witnessing such a reality exists. We asked the question, when will it really burst out big? Don't forget that Gog and Magog is a nuclear war. In 12 minutes, two thirds of the world will die. In 12 minutes, the genius author understands. Meaning over 5 billion stitches in 12 minutes. Blows your mind, doesn't it? We don't get blown away by 1,400 stitches. And kidnapped already three to four months. Now try to be bewildered by a world that brought five billion people in 12 minutes. And the war is just beginning, meaning it will be the starting point. And then the filtering era will begin. At the end of the filtering process, only righteous Jews and righteous non-Jews remained in the world. Got it? Think how many people will vanish from the world and what will happen and so on. How many buildings will be demolished and connections and banks, who knows where it will go. The rabbi talked about the kidnapped. What can we say to the families of the kidnapped? We have quite a few It's possible that the situation of the abducted families is even worse than that of the bereaved family. Wow. I try to think to myself, what if, God forbid, a verdict was passed on the sentence? That the Arabs will organize my house or kidnap her to Gaza and she will be there for months. With these predator animals, I do not need to go into details what they want there. So I thought about it a lot and I came to the conclusion that if I had to choose between the two, I would prefer that she ascends to the next world and that it would be in their hands for a few months. It's actually quite clear to me. And by the way, there's this foreigner who lives here from Ireland that they kidnapped his little girl, Emily. If you notice that, Emily, there was a story in the news. When they told him his daughter was killed, he yelled, yes. Yes, he says there is. He says it's better she's dead than treated by her hands. And I think that girl is about six or seven. Such a girl, he already knew, would find no mercy there. And they did terrible things to her. In the end, it turned out she was alive. And she was also released. That is, he got his daughter back. But I think something is definitely up. Intellectually, emotionally, I think it really exceeded its rarity. Well, that's no consolation. How, how can we console these families? Uh, what the rabbi says. With whom from the platform? At least let's hear what as the long rabbi as has their to children say. are captive, comfort is impossible. As long as their sons or daughters are held captive or the parents, there is no comfort for such a thing. It's written. One should not comfort a person in their anger, but at the time of their death, it's allowed in their presence. Now, someone just lost someone. You come to try to comfort him. It's not appropriate. Now he's in acute pain. As long as they know and imagine all sorts of things, what are their sons and daughters going through now if they have food and all? It's not so easy to That's console, easy. <laughs> but one can slightly ease the pain by distracting them. It is written, worry in a man's heart will divert his attention. As your sages say, what does it endanger? There are two interpretations of endangerment, meaning it diverts one's attention. Get busy with other things or there won't be time to sit and brood over his situation. And psychotherapy, I mean talk therapy, like psychology. When you go to a psychologist and pour out your heart, even though he hasn't said a word for 40 minutes, you just talked, you already feel much better. There's something about the psychology of a person who opens their heart to someone they trust. The pain comes out along with the conversation. So that's what needs to be done with the parents of the kidnapped. With the children of the kidnapped, simply to be with them and talk to them to distract their mind. Try to entertain them as much as possible so that they don't have time to sit alone in depression with a heavy heart. Is it what the narrow-minded do? Is it okay to ask questions in faith? It won't help. 
Because at the end of the day, there's one solid truth. Whatever God does is for the best. Accept that's how we run the world. There are no prohibitions without reason. It's all measure for measure. It's all the accounting of life cycles too. Many times a righteous person in this reincarnation suffers for the things they did in a past reincarnation. Since we are human, we don't even have a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the big picture. We don't even have 0.0001% understanding who they are, what their soul is, who they were in a futile reincarnation. What he does behind closed doors, what is destined for him. After all, Joseph being thrown into the pit looks like an unparalleled injustice. A righteous father, 17 siblings, throw him into a pit, sell him to Egypt. Now they're going to torment him. And in the end, after 12 years, it turned out that all of it was to make him the most important person in the world and to bring salvation to the people of Israel. Of course, we don't know the future. We have no idea what that person is thinking or planning. We don't know the past, don't know what this person does behind closed doors, don't know who they were in a past life. What belongs to Saul? You have 0.0%. Understanding from the movie, you start asking questions about a two-hour movie. You saw 10 seconds of the movie, those 10 seconds brought you into the world. You saw someone move something through something and it was found. When you start asking questions, why did he do that? Why this too? You saw 10 seconds out of two hours. How do you expect us to start explaining to you now? You have no idea. How wonderful. Is it allowed to ask questions in faith? What's the point? Understand, what's Is the point? Is it allowed to respond to those who it's ask? It's allowed to plead to the Creator for mercy. That's indeed allowed. So, I asked a great question. As someone who has questions about faith, where was the Creator for me in October? A Creator arises from the path in October with great mercy and instead of many thousands dying. So over a thousand people died. Understand, we need to look at the full glass, not the empty half. Like I told you, the moment 3,000 armed people show up and there's a party and no one there is armed, it could have easily ended in many, many casualties. But Rabbi, we are positioned as the Israel Defense Forces could cut leaders. the country from north to south, you know that? Rabbi, we are in the land of Israel, the Holy Land, the Promised Land. What's going on here? Have you ever read the portion of Bechukotai? I recommend you revisit it once a week. Do you see what's happening now in the country and around the world? Read the portion of Bechukotai and read the portion of Ketavot. After you read what's written there, what help is available and what offenses are listed, you'll understand that everything happening to us we were warned about. If I'm warning you now, don't touch this food, it's poison. Don't touch, don't drink this water, it has bacteria. Don't drink, don't eat. You whistle away a month, two months, doing everything backwards. And again, I remind I you, okay, it's worth and taking. it's important in the extreme, heaven forbid. You will suffer a terrible disease and fight for your life. So they will say, where is Mizrahi, where is he? How can he allow such a thing to happen? How much can I hold the person accountable? Rabbi, in the army there are Jews and non-Jews. What is the law for that one who is non-Jewish and fell in battle? Look, every soldier defending the land, whether Jewish or not, is rewarded for it. He is engaged in the commandment of defense. Among the residents of Israel, all kinds of righteous and good people live here. And thanks to the service of those Jews and non-Jewish soldiers, we have more peace, more security. And we can engage in things the world wants us to engage in. Therefore, if one of them is killed, whether a Jewish son or not, they have great reward in heaven for it. Now, again, the fact that a person was killed and it benefits him in the heavenly court because he was engaged in a commandment. And this commandment led to his death. This will greatly aid him on judgment day, but it is not called dying for the sanctification of the name. Remember dying for the sanctification of the name? Choosing to die to help the people of Israel is an honorable act. Choosing certain death, usually a soldier going into battle hopes to return, he doesn't want to die. He plans to return from battle, some are doomed to die, not us. But it's not like I'm saying, come kill me and leave them. Do you understand the difference? We were here in the country now, but soon evening leaves and goes back to the USA. Uh, how do they see from there what's happening here? Everyone hurts. Everyone is sad. Everyone is following the news. Every morning when we wake up, it's already afternoon here. We already know who has passed away today. Still hurting over him. So much mood, but it's not like here. 
because there is no comparison between a person who sees with their eyes and one who hears from afar. Still, people go about their routine. What's here? I've seen many finished people. We're done for, can't function, not working. They've lost all enthusiasm. They don't care about trips or anything anymore. So you see, this has a greater impact. And the reason is simple. The Holy One, blessed be He, said to Moses, our teacher, descend for they have forgotten your teachings. They sinned with the calf. That's now in the portion you will reach. Moses, God told him they were sinning. So stop the calf. Why did he need to come and see this? God said to him, go down for your people whom you brought out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. But it was only when Moses saw them with his own eyes that he smashed the tablets. That is, that God told him they were making a calf. He understood it was true. But it doesn't affect you as much as when you see it with your own eyes. And those who live abroad, some watch it on TV. But where I live, the ultra-Orthodox don't have TVs. They don't really see with their eyes what we see here. At the beginning of the war, there was a spiritual enthusiasm. We saw it, we heard it. Here is the rabbi in the lectures. You see what he did. But there's a feeling that it's slowly fading, even disappearing. I told you, it. one gets used to everything. Remember? Even to injuries, to loss, gradually. Somehow returning to routine and already got used to living with war. Slowly they returned to normalcy, went back to work, some reservists were released. The tension level has dropped. The war is also less intense. This could last for many months now. No choice. One must return to routine, needs to bring food home to make a living. We must continue to study, to do what needs to be done. You can't freeze life forever, but... But what is the offer still? The proposal is to make a daily return, to strengthen greatly in the list of prayers. Really take it to pray for every soldier, for every Jew in the country. To pray is simple. The more you pray and cry for rain, the better. After that. The power of the devil, who is the accuser, weakens if we proceed with our day as if nothing happened. The devil will rejoice. Every day he comes to the court above, states his case, there is no reply to him. He says, look, see, the Jews have returned to their routine. They no longer suffer. They no longer cry. They no longer recite psalms like in the first week, month. They've returned to routine, you see? Back to the nonsense they do. We must not go back to foolishness. We love to remember what brought us this declaration. I believe this is not the rabbi's message. What is the rabbi's message to the people so of Israel? The message I said, first of all, to strengthen in Torah much study. The Torah protects and saves. The Torah brings protection. If you see that we were severely hurt, it means there wasn't enough protection. It means there wasn't enough Torah. We need to increase Torah study. Share more, bring speakers who say powerful things and inspire a taste for repentance. To distribute books, distribute this, distribute USB, distribute everything possible. To increase public awareness. Public awareness. The number of righteous people in the nation of Israel grows. So will the situation improve? The more righteous among us, the less in the trouble. Uh, last night you said 24 soldiers had fallen and they touched your heart. What did he do to you physically? It's an arrow in the heart. You're collapsing, stripping. It can be this easy. Wow, wow, wow. 24 young people falling in a moment. It's very important to get back to the routine. You know what's the most painful here? that you also know for sure in your head that they were killed for no reason. A weak government afraid of what the nations will say and what will the leftists say. Sending soldiers to search for Nazis one by one in their bunkers. Endanger their lives one by one. Rise to the field and bomb, reducing the danger to soldiers as much as possible. Without considering the enemy's feelings. In war, there's no negotiation. Feelings of Nazis are not considered. By the way, I personally believe not like various flowers chatter away, uttering words only I deem nearly all innocent of offense. Almost none. And if you tell me, oh, there are children there, these children are three years old. They are being taught to be murderers. They are already becoming murderers in five years. They will already have guns and they will be... The elections are just the a matter of time. Strength but your neighbor is a minister in the Israeli government.
A minister, not every minister has the power to make Let's decisions. Get started. For security, he is actually in the Ministry of Education. Do you want to talk to him about it? I'm not really sure. Sticking my nose into other people's business. I say the things I have to say in speeches and people share. And almost everyone knows my opinion on almost every matter. The kid knows me too. I'm not one to beat around the bush, all right? I say it as it is. Do you believe I also take flack for it sometimes, as you know? It didn't deter me because if I can't speak the truth, I have absolutely no taste for talking. To come and speak flattery, empty talk, words of gratitude. Talking about what the Creator really wants us to talk about is essential. Without it, there's no point. It's harmful. It's not just unhelpful, it's also damaging. Do you know about the families of the kidnapped? Uh, heard I heard them? they're protesting. I was at the Knesset last week. The day I arrived, they just reached the parliament and set norms. And it was really unpleasant. Of course, no one judges them. We understand their pain. And one shouldn't judge a person in their time of sorrow. And I understand they're doing everything they can to free their children. You and I would be doing exactly the same thing, maybe even more. But I say there, we need to make decisions for the good of the entire nation of Israel. Indeed, there are families here suffering day and night, going through hell. But, uh... Such a mistake like a borrowed transaction must not happen. It's absolutely forbidden to repeat. Because you saw for one soldier, 1,027 murderers were released. Sorry. Among them are senior and the one they eliminated in Lebanon, meaning the most dangerous individuals today, the most Nazi-like murderers today, all were released in a deal. The Shalit deal has already claimed the lives of thousands of Israelis, thousands dead. Some of them kidnapped because of this foolish deal. The reason my business was happening is because the leaders lack a Torah and they don't know the law. If they knew the law, it's written that one should not redeem captives at too high a price. Saving one Jew at the cost of a hundred others dying is not justifiable. It's illogical, right? Are you ready to invest one hundred dollars to earn one dollar? Uh, well, uh, You'd prefer to invest a dollar to earn a hundred. Well. Imagine someone doing it the other way, investing a hundred to earn a dollar. Investing a hundred, earning a dollar. You're just losing. Ah, the families are screaming. It hurts. The heart is broken. A leader must be strong. He must endure the pain, must break his heart. We are humans. It breaks the heart. But he needs to think, if I now need 200 families to suffer, or 5,000 families with us, I choose the many over the few. Rabbi Joseph Mizrachi, thank you very much, Honorable Rabbi. And with God's help, next time it will already be in the Holy Temple to speak. Filled with hope, we've raised this for 2,000 years.